Yum, yum! Hello, this is Wes, and in this video, I'd like to show you how to render your Substance Painter maps inside of Modo. In Modo, we're going to be using the physically based material, so I'm going to show you how to create a custom configuration export for your Substance Painter projects. So the scene I have here is just the sample scene that we ship with in Painter. So if I do File, Open Sample, you'll see that we have this preview sphere. And for the environment map, I'm just using Glazed Patio. Now you can grab these from your Substance Painter shelf in the Documents folder, or you can use any environment map you would like. So now let's take a look at exporting our textures. So I'm going to right click and go to Export Textures. And what I'm going to need to do is create a new configuration. So I'm going to come over here to my Configuration tab, and I'm going to create a specific Modo preset. So I'll click this plus button. Here for the preset name, I'll just right click and rename this guy to Modo. OK, so now we have our Modo preset, and we need to start creating our output maps. Now, the default shader in Substance Painter is using a metallic roughness PBR workflow, and that shader is a real-time shader. So you are going to have a little bit of a discrepancy between using a real-time shader versus a you know, physically based ray trace system, such as what we're going to use in Modo but we can get very, very close results. Because I want to use the physically based material, I'm going to be using some of these converted maps. These converted maps allow us to basically kind of transfer that PBR data to other map types that we can use in different renderers. And we're going to utilize these maps here for our Modo configuration. Now, another thing that you could do is just export the default PBR metal rough maps and use the Unreal shader inside of Modo. And that works great as well. However, I feel like we can get uh, a bit more of a closer match by using just the physically based material. OK, so now let's get to the process of actually creating our output maps. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create an RGB. So I'm going to create an RGB output here. And uh, let's set up our name. So um, I can use this little dollar sign here to create a couple flags here for my naming convention. So for example, I want to uh, set this to use the mesh name. And then I'll do an underscore. Again, I'll use the another flag here, the texture set, to uh, append the texture set to my output name. And then what we're going to use is this converted map here for diffuse. So we need a diffuse texture. So here, let me use an underscore, and then we'll call this uh, diffuse. Now I can come over here to my converted maps and just left click and drag and drop this right on this RGB button. And then this uh, pop up appears, and I'm going to set this to the RGB channels. And so that's all I need to do. So now let's set up some more RGB outputs. Instead of creating the output from scratch, I'm just going to kind of borrow what I already have here by clicking this Duplicate button. So we'll do this. Uh, this time we're going to work on our normal. So uh, here, let me just uh, change this uh, output name here to normal. And then I'm going to come over here to my converted map where we have normal. And I want to use the OpenGL. So we're going to left click, drag and drop this onto the RGB button, and again, choose RGB channels. So here you'll notice that the RGB button here is kind of changing color, and we can see that same color is marked next to the converted map that we're using. This, again, just lets us see what maps are being assigned to uh, the outputs here. All right, so uh, let's create another RGB output. So again, let's uh, just dupe this guy. And this one here is going to be our specular. So we'll do underscore, and I'm going to use specular. Now in my case, we have two options. We have reflection and specular. And these two maps actually encode uh, data just a little bit differently. So for instance, the reflection map is going to have our metal reflectance values for the uh, areas of our maps here that are pure metal. And then for areas that are non-metal or dielectric, it's going to set that to pure white. So basically, we're not going to have any tint to the reflection for dielectrics. Then we have the specular. And the specular also encodes the metallic reflectance value for our metals. But then it takes the dielectric materials, or the non-metals, and sets those to the F0 reflectance value. So for instance, that would be like 4% for non-metals. So technically speaking, we should uh, think about using reflection. However, just during my test, I find that the specular map actually gives me a little bit of a closer result. So I'm going to use the specular in this case. So we're going to left click, and we're going to drag and drop and place this here on the specular and choose RGB channels. So that's going to take care of our RGB outputs. Now we need a couple grayscale. So let's come back up to our buttons here and click grayscale. And here, let's set up our flag. So again, just as we did before, we'll use mesh and underscore uh, texture set. OK, so now that we have that, uh, we're going to use uh, a roughness. So now we can just come over to our input map because we were working with roughness directly here uh, in our Substance Painter project. We don't need to convert it from anything. So we're just going to grab roughness, left click, drag and drop it. And uh, here, just place this under gray channel. And let's set the, uh, the actual name here to roughness. 
And we're going to need another grayscale channel. So let's uh, dupe this guy. And so this one here, I'm going to call this one F0. And we have a specific F0 map. And we're going to use this guy. Now, the F0 map encodes that Fresnel value at a zero angle. So for instance, with metallics, you're going to see this closer to white. And with uh, uh, non-metals or dielectrics, you're going to see this uh, closer to a dark value. This is going to represent that 4% specular amount that you see inside of uh, Moto's material, physically based material for the non-metals. And then for metals, we want this F0 to be a much higher value. So we're going to use this here for our specular mount. This is our F0. So let's just left click, drag and drop, and just place this here and choose gray channel. And you know, just so it makes a little bit more sense once we're inside Moto, let's actually just call this specular amount. So this actually takes care of the core maps that we need to, to uh, rebuild this physically based material inside of Moto. Now one other thing that I do that uh, technically isn't uh, you know, physically accurate in this case because we're using a ray trace renderer is I'll also come in here and I'll just create one more of these channels and then I'm going to add my ambient occlusion into this. And sometimes you get just a little bit of extra punch multiplying this ambient occlusion into the specular mount. We'll use this as a trick. So here I'll just call this AO. And we'll come over here to our ambient occlusion. Now, in this case, I didn't uh, paint any ambient occlusion. So what I'm going to do here is just use my ambient occlusion that I baked. This is the mesh map. So I'm just going to left click and drag and drop and set this from gray channel. Now, if you have uh, a situation where maybe uh, you were adding some ambient occlusion here in your layer stack, you could use this mixed AO, which is going to be a uh, mixture of your ambient occlusion that you baked with any ambient occlusion data that you set here inside your layer stack. But in my case, I don't have that. So uh, I'm just going to choose this mixed, a uh, I'm sorry, this mesh map ambient occlusion. This is just the ambient occlusion that I baked right from the mesh. And that's going to take care of my output maps. So now we'll come over here to my export. And let me actually find the correct uh, Moto config that I have. And I already have a, a location for these maps. So uh, now all I have to do is set my document size, whatever uh, that, whatever resolution I want to export my textures at. And then I'll just click Export. All right, so it's done. You can see it's a pretty uh, quick process. So now we're going to jump over to Moto and import these textures and set up the material. OK, so here we are in Moto, and I've just imported in the mesh that I had in my Substance Painter project. And I've grabbed that uh, glazed patio HDR map, and I have this placed here as my environment. And so I have a single uh, material group here. And so now we're going to start looking at uh, setting up this material. So if we come over to the material and I come to Properties, again, uh, for the shading model, I'm using Physically Based. All right, so uh, let me first just import my maps here. So I'm just going to load an image. And I'm going to uh, select my maps and just uh, bring these here into my clip browser. OK, so let's start uh, with our diffuse. So I'm going to come over here to my diffuse texture and just drag and drop that right here into uh, my material group. Uh, OK, so before we get started with this, let's also talk about our uh, environment setup here. So uh, let me come over and set this here to the advanced viewport. And so we'll let this catch up here just a second. OK, so now I'm going to uh, hit O on the keyboard to come over to my viewport properties. And under the advanced tab, what I do for my lighting, now I'm not using any lighting in the scene right now. So what I want to do is just set this to environment. Uh, my background, if I like, I could set this to environment as well. And then here, I'm just actually going to turn off ambient inclusion just because I don't want to hit the extra performance hit there. One other thing, I'll come over here to drawing and uh, control. And for my GL reflection, uh, I'm going to set this to my environment. OK, so uh, now that I have this set up and we've got our first diffuse uh, texture here into our material group, let's just quickly jump over here to Render. We'll go to Properties. And under Global Illumination, I want to make sure that my environment important sampling is enabled. Substance Painter uses important sampling as well for its background. All right, so now we're ready. Let's go back over to our clips and let's continue adding our clips. All right, so we have our diffuse. Uh, next, let's grab our specular. So it's another RGB map. Let's just left click and just drag and drop that here. Now, for the effect, I'm going to uh, come over here to my basic channels, and I'm going to set this to my specular color. OK, so here's what we have so far. Um, here in my uh, viewport, I am going to uh, just toggle my wireframe here. OK. All right, so we have these guys in place. Let's do our normal map here, so, uh, since we're just kind of on the kick of using RGB maps. Uh, let's drag and drop this guy here into our material group. 
Now, one thing that you want to make sure of here with your normal uh, here, let's set this to our normal. Uh, let's go to surface shading and set this here to normal. Now, here we're going to get this option to convert normal to the uh, correct color space. And we're just going to click yes to this. And again, it's just going to handle the gamma correction here for our normal map. All right, so we have that set. And uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is add our specular amount. Now, this is a grayscale map. So let's left click and drag and drop this here into our layer group. And here, let's set the effect. So basic channels. And we want this to be specular amount. So we'll set this to specular amount. Now, one thing we want to do is make sure that this map type is correctly interpreted for this linear workflow. So we're going to come over here to our properties here with this guy selected. And I'm going to go to the image still tab. And for color space, I'm going to change this from default and just set this to be linear. Now, it just depends on how you know your color management is set up inside of Modo. Uh, for me, I just have it set here to linear. I know that my RGB maps, because of the color management preferences, uh, which actually I have set at default, uh, they're just going to uh, set these as sRGB, which is going to be correct. But this, I want to set this to be linear. All right, so again, back to our clips. And the next thing we want to do is our roughness. So left click, drag and drop this guy in and let's set our effect. So here we'll come over to basic channels and we want this here to be roughness. Once again, we're going to come to our properties and the image still, since this is a grayscale texture, all grayscale, we need to interpret these as linear. So we'll just make sure we have that set correctly. And let's jump back over here to clips. Now, at this point in time, we now have our render set up correctly. We have our physically based material rebuilt uh, from the maps we exported from Painter. And we now have that rendering right here inside of Moto. And we're getting a, a very close result. Now, like I said, one other thing I kind of do for a trick, if you want to get a little extra punch kind of in the occluded areas, I'll reuse this AO map. So let's grab this guy and drag and drop this into here and uh, our layer group. And let's set this basic channel here to uh, specular amount. And then we're going to come over here to our properties. Uh, while we're here on the image still tab, let's set this guy to linear. And then let's come over to our texture layers. And for the blending mode, we're going to set this to multiply. So it gives us just a little, like I said, a little bit of extra punch in those occluded areas. Uh, you know, it's not needed, um, technically not physically correct for what we're doing here, but it's, you know, kind of a stylistic choice here. And so here we go. We have our maps exported from Substance Painter and applied here in Moto and rendering, and we're getting a pretty nice result. And now we have our own Moto configuration that we can use next time. So we can just quickly just export our maps and just bring them here into Moto for our rendering. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time. Yum, yum!